You mentioned Emacs there, and obviously I can't have you on the show without talking about Vim. So yeah. when did you start using Vim? And when you first used it, did you actually find it interesting? Or was it one of those things where you're like, oh, this is a cool concept, and just like throw it away for a bit? So before I can tell you that, I first have to tell you that when I was younger, mm. during the the old days of TCP connections between computers and playing some Battle.net, mm. uh, Battle.net Warcraft 2 came out. And on it, there was a ladder system. Okay. And I learned... I really like trying to compete in this kind of stuff. I really like RTSs. And so I got really into it. You know, I was really trying to become good at doing all the things. A big fan of grunts and the horde. And I was like, zork, zork. you know, I was like just into it, right? And then Warcraft 3 came out. I loved it. World of Warcraft came out. I didn't like it as much because I was kind of coming into a really like Warcraft mentality. Right. And so when I started programming, it was NetBeans. And I, I tell you what. If you could see those days, I was so fast switching between control, shift, and the arrows. And I would just just rage it as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. It was just so good. I was I guarantee you that if I could if I could just practice a little bit, I bet you I could get good at it again. Wait, NetBeans it, is still around? Genuinely it was just like the control arrows and shifting and all that. I thought I was genuinely great at that. Mm-hmm. And Someone was just like, all right, you got to try Vim. And now when I went to college, I literally thought Vim, that's for old people. That's like <laughs> stupid, right? It's just stupid. It's a stupid program for stupid old people that want to work on a terminal. Who wants to work on a terminal? It's, it, come on, get with the modern times, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, <laughs> you, see, you see, you know, it takes time to change, sure, right? No, I, so I, then, I know, I know. <laughs> so then in a, a 2011, something like that, uh, mm-hmm. I had a friend, Bavard. Bavard Tiberi, he is just like, hey, I'm going to learn Vim motions. Mm-hmm. I need someone to join me because or else I'm going to just lose it if I don't. So can you just join me? Mm-hmm. And, I was, and I was just like, okay, well, I'm very fast. Maybe I could like Vim motions. And so like day one, I'm WWWBBB. You know, I, I learned the basic things. I'm in IntelliJ, so I'm using IntelliJ with Vim Motion. So I'm just like right. doing it. And then I discover F and T. And I was just like, oh boy, this is awesome. And then I discover percent sign. So I, I, I to delete a function, I'd hit shift V, F, opening squirrely, percent sign, D. Bam, 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 bam. It just felt so good. I was just like, oh my goodness. This is like my previous version of programming, except for I just have more than arrow keys. I have like a whole prim- like I have a whole set to describe how I can move really, really fast. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of like when I fell in love with Vim Motion. So Vim Motions have always been the best. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really mind other editors. It's just editors are just so slow and it bothers me. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so I just use NeoVim because it's just fast. Like I quit using Doom Max because I just mm-hmm. kept, it just kept pissing me off because it would just like be too slow. So I was just like, just, just, just move faster right and so i quit emacs that whole thing mm-hmm. and did intellij for a long time but it eventually made me kind of bonkers but intellij was really good during the javascript days before typescript mm-hmm. it, intellij was truly the way to do web programming at that point and so finally then i tried vs code for a long time really didn't like it and i had a coworker that was just like just use vim trust i'll help you i'll get you set up and that's when i learned a little bit more about the vimrc using bundle to install plugins all that kind of oh, stuff so you hadn't so done any like, the plugin okay. stuff before that point no i haven't so now we're like 2000, 2000 and like 18 uh, 2017 something like that uh, i had a coworker anders backen uh and I went and asked him a question about some ver- older version of the television platform, mm-hmm. and he used Emacs, and he doesn't even type properly. He types like a, a weirdo, and he just flew so fast, switching, going to old versions, hitting a build, opening up here, fuzzy, fi- and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. And so like that was really where the fire happened. And so about two years after that, then I started streaming and all that, and that's when I learned even more. And then about four years after that, I started building a bunch of plugins uh, and kind of really getting into the whole NeoVim thing. Because I, I just knew I'd never learn VimScript. Mm-hmm. I'm just not going to learn it. It's just too crazy of a language. Uh, and it just didn't interest me. It just, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't want something that's super bespoke. But Lua is super cool. Lua is great. You can use Lua, like embed it into whatever program you're using and be like, I now have scripting powers in my program. Mm-hmm. This is fantastic. So I, I am a huge fan of Lua. And so I've, I, I have enjoyed learning it and using it for NeoVim. My NeoVim config is the most cobbled together disaster you will ever see. I, it's like, it's a pulled over from my old Vim install, and then I've never like refreshed it. So it's all like it's it's just been adding on to it over the years, and it's 
It was. You just have a bunch of raw dog to Vim commands. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like with 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 Vim dot command passing the string, and it's actually just Vim script executing. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's really beautiful. Need... That's beautiful. Uh, back when people were like really excited about Lua in Neo Vim, people were like, "Oh, you should you should do some Lua stuff." Because back then I was like really, I was still like really big on doing Vim stuff, really big on doing programming stuff, and now I've sort of shifted away to doing more like general Linuxy stuff. Um, I just never got around to it. Like I, I, I really should though. Like Lua seems like a neat language. Uh, it great. It's super. It's it's like Go. It's super stupid. Mm. And by being super stupid, you just don't express yourself as much. Right. And if you don't express yourself as much, you end up building simple programs that just do the thing well. Like that's kind of how I. This is kind of like my ultimate kind of renaissance of simplicity. Is just like the more. The less ways you can express yourself, the more likely you're just going to write something that does one thing well. Mm. And so Lua is a very constrained, simple language. You can learn it in an afternoon. It's not hard. Like there's some dumb things about it. Like not equals is not a bang equal. It's a tilde equal. Okay, like sure. whatever, right? Like sure, that's, not, yeah. that's not the end of the world, right? And so there's a couple gotchas. I don't know. I love it. Uh, my NeoVim config is the best it's ever been. I'm going to upload it into my own little repository coming up, but it is the best it's ever been. It's mm -hmm. smooth. It's great. Uh, LazyVim, a little plugin manager, is really, really good. It, it just, it just, it does a lot of things that I want things to do. Everything just feels good. I'm happy with where I'm at.